It all started in 2014 when a young man named Nick Mason was inspired by YouTube wiffle ball leagues and discovered the infamous sharp curving alternative, the blitz ball. This device allows regular kids to pitch like the pros. All it took was a couple friends and a dream to start the Bombers Blitz Ball League. They started out with $50 and a backyard mint for Blitz Ball. That $50 was used to purchase the first camera which began the Bombers Blitz Ball League. After one successful season, the players were unable to continue at the rate they had envisioned in the 2015 and 2016 seasons. Then came 2017. Each player was committed in their own way, showing up throughout the summer. Mickey Dell emerged as one of the best players in the league. He struggled in the 2014 season, but remained committed to improvement. Then came the riser, said to be one of the best pitches in blitzball history. The players weren't used to seeing a pitch moving from their knees to their eyes. Mike and his riser came away with the championship in the 2017 season. Next was Marco. Bouncing back after a disqualification in the 2017 playoffs, Marco came for vengeance in the 2018 season, hitting 350 in the regular season and making it to the NLCS against Mike. They matched up in one of the greatest series in Blitzball history where Marco proved himself that he is one of the best players in the Bombers Blitzball League, just coming up short against the future 2018 champion. Finally, the founder, the one, the only, Nicky Babuda. Nick proved to be one of the league's best in the 2014 World Series, where he came up short against the infamous Antonio. In the 2017 season, Nick led the league in homers, showing his continued dominance of the league. But in 2018, he just came up short against Antonio, but continued hitting bombs. That season, the Bombers Blitzball League won the honor of second best Blitzball League on YouTube and won first place in the Blitzball Contest video. Then, in the fall of 2018, Nick received a text message. A message with an opportunity unlike anything the members could have dreamed of. A chance to fly down to Tampa Bay, Florida and compete in the Blitzball World Series against some of the best players in the world. Their competition included Como Blitzball, NEA Blitzball, and Oakleaf Blitzball League. Ecstatic, they accepted the offer to compete. In January of 2019, they began their journey. I'm sure all the leagues were in disbelief when they got the text message that um, we were invited to go down to play in Florida against each other in a Blitzball World Series. I don't think that was expected by anyone. And the first thing that came to my mind was, we have an opportunity to grow. We gotta grow this channel. Um, we don't have many subscribers. We are under a thousand at the time and I was like this is this is going to be the opportunity. Not only was it a good opportunity to gain subscribers and get the league bigger, it was great to meet the other leagues and stuff. It seemed like a once in a lifetime opportunity that we couldn't pass up on. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm very grateful for the opportunity that we got um, as a league. I remember vividly uh, Nick came into the living room of our dorm and told me about the offer that Aaron gave us and we hopped right on it, and it was probably one of the best decisions we made as a league. Yeah, I mean, I remember, I remember exactly where I was like, on my college campus when I got that uh, that the, the the original text from Nick, and he was he was saying, you know, there might be a chance that we might be going down to Florida to play blitzball with Aaron Kim, and like maybe even meet some MLB players. And I like, looked, I looked at it, and I was seeing yeah, on my way to class. I'm like, eh, no, I'm like, that's not gonna happen. <laughs> but um, but I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll I'll keep tabs on it, and you know, and but but just some some miracle it just kind of materialized and eventually it like I remember we were on our way down Marco Nick and I and we were just talking to ourselves like we're actually going down to Florida to play blitz ball with a whole a whole bunch of other leagues from other from different parts of the country and meet some MLB players and we're like this is an opportunity that we could not pass up and we just couldn't even believe we were going it was one of the most fun weekends of all three of our lives and it was just, it was something that we're never going to forget, and I'm never going to forget every step of the way. I, I still remember how I just kind of shook my head when I saw the original text, but, but man, it was, it was something special. Their first round opponent was Oakleaf, led by Zach, one of the best of Western PA. Yeah, Zach is probably one of the greatest uh, blitzball pitchers I've ever seen. Um, he's got one of the nicest curveballs, he's got a lot of movement on it, and he's got a nice fastball that can coincide with the pitch. Uh, he had to be on my heels all day long. 
All the Bombers needed was one run with Mike Deal coming in. He had a .29 ERA in the 2018 season, but struggled and let up three runs. Oh man, Zach's homers, man. Uh, that, the, those, that was tough, that was tough. He, Zach is, you know, we, I mean, this was obviously the first time we had played against any of the, uh, any of the other leagues. And, you know, we were confident going in, you know, um, but, but, you know, I was trying to mix up pitches and whatever, and, and Zach just, I think he could have, I forget exactly, but I think he took a couple, a couple uh, curveballs, a submarine pitch. He was right on it from both sides of the plate, too. And, I, you know, from, from that point on, we're like, okay, Zach, Zach's someone we're going to look out for. And, um, and that, that was just an example of uh, some of the great competition we faced. It was, it was good competition the whole way through. We can't wait to go, you know, to go back and see um, how everyone else has progressed because uh, we, we feel like every season we kind of, um, we kind of all get better and we can probably see the same for everyone else. So. Nick also allowed three runs coming in relief. The Bombers were down six heading into the final inning. Bottom of the third, the Bombers are down six. We weren't out of the game, honestly. It didn't feel like it was that big of a lead. I just knew that, you know, we had to get runners on base and keep the line moving. Jared came in to pitch for Oakleaf, and the Bombers were just trying to get runners on base. Fortunately for the Bombers, Jared struggled out of the gate to throw strikes. After consecutive walks, Marco continued to struggle at the plate, striking out for the first out of the inning. Yeah, so after I uh, continued to struggle at the plate, um, I got out uh, the first out of the inning. I think I struck out, and I had to rely on my teammates Mike and Nick, and uh, it, was, it was in their hands. I, I couldn't really do much at the time to uh, make my team win. Two consecutive singles and two strikeouts by Donardo, and the Bombers were down to their final out. Five runs to tie, Mike singles in a run. Ground ball, I'll be a single. Then Nick comes up with the bases loaded and two outs. And of course, I come up to bat with uh, bases loaded, two outs. We're down four, and of course, a grand slam is going through my head right now. I'm as nervous as could be, but if you watch the videos often, this is my time to shine. And I know it in my head that if I don't come through here, this game's probably over. Uh, I saw Nick walk up to the batter's box, and of course, being optimistic, I, I was thinking to myself, you know, our best hitter in the league, something very special could happen here, or we can get out and we can be headed back to New York. Two, two outs, this, this, is Nick's, uh, this is Nick's hot zone. This, this is where Nick wants to be. We, we call him the comeback kid. Uh, he has more walk-ups than any of us. Uh, he, he's who we want up in that situation, man. I mean, I think he was feeling kind of sick that day, um, and I was just hoping he could you know, stay in there, but, but uh, you know, that, that he, he's, he's who we wanted to come up. Two. Oh, and that's oh. a drive! A pop-up, and that one lands gone! The score is now all tied up, 6-0 on that grand slam. And with two strikes, the comeback kid struck again, hitting an opposite field game-tying grand slam to make the score 6-6. Six so yeah, I mean, I, I got a good piece of the ball, I'm going to be honest with you. Some, some might say it was a cheap shot and it barely went over. It did barely go over, but I got a good piece of the ball and luckily the wind was, um, the wind was in my favor during that hit. And I came through and I don't want to say I wasn't surprised by the outcome, but it fit the comeback kid pretty well. Honestly, a lot, a lot of people don't know this except the few that were in attendance that day. Um, I woke up sick that morning and I sprinted around the bases and that wasn't a good decision. I was just so pumped up with all the adrenaline going through my body from hitting that home run. Might have been a little dehydration also that I just forgot what was going on basically. I made a home plate, celebrated, and I sat down and I just threw up. I literally just threw up everywhere. And I felt a lot better after that. Um, yeah, I felt better and uh, continued the game from there on. Uh, Nick hits the home run and we are as hyped as we can possibly get. Uh, we got the adrenaline, we got the momentum and I don't think we could have got happier with the result that, that, that it gave us. Man, that home run, man. <laughs> that, was, that was one of the highlights of the, highlights of the entire trip. And, and I remember Nick was just storming around the bases. And I said he was sick before. And he, he was feeling a little, uh, little not, not, not so great after, after running around the bases. But man, was it worth it. That was, that was, 
one of the craziest. I mean, that that was just Nick. That that was Nicky Wabuda, the comeback kid, doing what he does best. And uh, we really needed him there. We were down six nothing, six nothing, and uh, and by some miracle, Nick just hit the home, hit the grand slam at the right time, and you know that's what happens. And Marco continued to dominate on the mound in extra innings, striking out the side in the next two innings. Got him. Uh, I think my pitching was pretty much on. Um, I don't think I gave up a hit. I think I struck out everyone I, was, I faced, and I had to do that because my offense wasn't wasn't doing very well. So I think my pitching is something that I held down for the team. They cruised along to the fifth inning, where Marco, getting a good read on the knuckle curve, blasted his first hit of the tournament, a walk-off, sending the Bombers to the championship. Oh, that's a bomb! And that will end the game, a walk-off homer! And Bombers are headed to the championship. They beat Oakley on a walk-off and they win 7-6. to six. In the game, a walk-off homer! Uh, yeah, you know, I just, I was struggling at the plate that day, and I just kept my mindset, you know, one, one at bat at a time, one pitch at a time, and uh, I think it was a knuckle curve ball that started above my shoulder, dropped down to the zone, I saw it and I hit it over the fence, and, and we won. I knew when Marco went up to the plate, and I'm thinking he's due, he's got to do something, and he did, he finally came through with his first hit of the tournament. It's kind of funny that the comeback kid and Mr. Clutch both lived up to their expectations going to that game. Next came the championship game against Como. They knew they were facing another great pitcher in Chandler, being the best pitcher in Como Blitzball. Marco and Chandler continued to dominate on the mound. It's so hard to tell what pitch he's throwing. And I think we struggled a lot in, this, in the tournament offensively because we didn't know the pitchers that well. Um, obviously in the bottom of the Soul League, you see the same pitchers over and over again. So you get a feel of them. Everyone was looking for that knuckle drop, but we just couldn't touch it. Yeah, Chandler's got awesome stuff. Um, a lot of his stuff is like dropping motions and that kind of stuff. So uh, we don't see that in the Bombers Blitz League a lot, just a straight drop ball. Like I think I think uh, Chandler throws that very well. That's his best pitch. And I think we, I struggled to see that off, off the gate. Nick struggled in the top of the third, walking the first two and calling upon Mike in relief. Mike came in striking out the side using the infamous riser in a bases loaded jam. In the bottom of the inning, the Bombers loaded the bases with two outs and Nick coming to bat. Here I am again in a high pressure situation. This time I'm facing Caden. It was a high pressure situation, but there was a lot less pressure on me knowing that it was a tie game. But once again, I was going up there with the same approach, just put the ball in play, and hopefully get a result out of it. Uh, Nick's walking to, the, walking to the plate again, and all I'm thinking to myself is that we could, we could be following suit and seeing something that, that happened last game, and we could walk it off here and, and become uh, the Tampa Classic World Series champions. Hey, situation again. It's uh, Nick in, you know, bottom, bottom of the final inning of the game, two outs, you know, two strikes. Spot everyone wants to be in, but uh, Nick just relishes, relishes those situations. He he did it in the first game, and again, we're just like, you know, uh, Marco and I were having a little trouble with the play, and we're Nick's Nick's the guy. Nick's the guy we went up there, and uh, and yeah, it was something special. Coming into the bat, Nick was batting 500 in the World Series. Caden threw a riser, which Nick poked to the left field side, bringing in the winning run and giving the Bombers Blitzball League the World Series championship. I got a riser from Caden. Um, I knew it was coming, honestly. It's, it's one of those pitches that he throws consistently for strikes, so I was prepared for the riser. All in all, Nick had a 555 average with six RBIs at the plate. Marco ended the tournament with a solid 0, 0, 0 ERA from six hitless innings and 18 strikeouts. The Bombers were the first league to ever win the Blitzball World Series. Bombers Blitzball League are 2019 World Series champions. Oh, and that's a drive! A pop-up! And that one lands gone! Oh, that's a bomb! And that will end the game! A walk-off homer! And Bombers are headed to the championship! 
I just want to, you know, I want to thank Nick and I want to thank Mike. Um, you know, we all did something special. Um, you know, one thing here, Nick may have struggled on the mound, but he had a hell of a day on offense and he picked himself up. Mike on the mound closed it out. Hell of a job to everyone here. And you know, I struggled on offense, but I think I, I helped the team on the mound, and we all did something to help the team win. They continued on that day revealing their talents to MLB players in the Blitzball vs. MLB tribute game. Marco and Mike combined for a scoreless inning striking out Preston Tucker of the Atlanta Braves, Paven Smith of the Arizona Diamondbacks, and Malik Smith of the Seattle Mariners. <laughs> On offense, Nick continued to rake, stealing the spotlight with two bombs, one off Michael Gibbons and Malik Smith, being the only runs scored for the Blitzball All-Stars. I was the only one who actually contributed offensively with two home runs. I had the back going that day. Um, I felt good at the plate, so I knew coming into the Blitzball All-Star game that when I had the opportunity, I was going to take advantage of it. I only saw two pitches, but luckily they were both home runs. They were the only runs scored for the Blitzball All-Stars. Unfortunately, we couldn't get the W, but it was a great game, and I felt good at the plate. Finally, Nick, in his onslaught of hitting, came away with the Home Run Derby Championship, beating Chandler of Como in the final round. Nick, how do you feel about your uh, home run derby win? You know, it's just fun, great experience coming out here and playing. You know, I missed a, a lot of pitches. I shouldn't have been swinging and missing, but uh, it was fun. It was a great experience. Final round of the home run derby, me versus Chandler. Honestly, both of us were doing terrible. Um, I don't mean to make excuses, but the guy that was throwing to us in the home run derby, he was throwing Chet. And <laughs> the other guys can agree with me on that. But uh, Chandler and I, honestly, we both choked at the plate. Uh, it was just a matter of who choked more. And I came out with a win, and... It was all W's for the Bombers that day. Yeah, you know, Nick uh, won the home run derby, and it was it was amazing uh, rooting for him, watching him. Uh, as he's a part of our league, you know, me and Mike were on the sidelines. We, we got out early on, and Nick Nick was looking real good, and he won it. And uh, I couldn't be more proud of that kid because he's one of the best one of the best hitters I've ever seen. The league celebrated this historic day of blitzball by going out to get wings with Michael Gibbons. This capped off a special trip and an unforgettable experience with both friends and the pros. Thanks to the man, the myth, and the legend, creator of Blitzball, Aaron Kim. It's delicious.